feel like we've been gone for months. Are you serious? Okay. Oh, yeah. We have done so much. Yeah. 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 of those memorized by rote, she has to refer to it. So it takes her probably three times longer than any other kid that just has it. Same with real estate. You know, when you're um, 
I'm trying to get a buyer off the fence to get out and look at a property or you're just wanting to interact with a buyer just to get them to meet with you and build a rapport and build that connection there are things that are so fundamental to our business that if we don't have it as the core of our being we can't be flexible and spontaneous later when we're trying to just flow and you get all of a sudden maybe three referrals but you're stuck you're like oh my gosh now what do i do with it oh what's next what do i say it's because those fundamentals are not a part of us like we're not living and breathing them so what i want to do is go over a few fundamentals today and these are literally like brent gove 101 okay this is brent gove bible this is brent gove momentum book <laughs> and i never deviate from this even if i'm going off script a little bit it's still based on everything I'm gonna lay out for you right now so I don't think this is something that we ever grow out of it's something that we have to keep going back to so that we can get stronger and stronger in the mix so what I'm gonna first do is um, when you're when you either have a referral or an online lead or you've met somebody in open at an open house and we're gonna be talking about buyers right now, okay? So this is all think buyer. A buyer, what, what do we need to do with that buyer? Can you think of our number one goal for that buyer that we wanna move them toward? Take them to Show them a property. Give Manu a whatever. Yeah. <laughs> all right, show them property. When they look, they buy. Okay, now not that they're going to buy right then, but you want to show them property. Now, uh, the way I do this is different for depending on how I meet this person. If I meet them in an open house and I think they're not going to rape me or kill me, then I, I'm sorry, I'm just like being really right. crude. But, right. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll like go show, I will show them a property right then and there. Right. I'll shut down the open house and put a be back in 10 minutes sign on it. Hey, let's go look at, you know, what what on this list you wanna see. Um, so if I, I, I remember keeping, there was a guy who came with his wife and then later he came back and he wanted to look for his kids, which is like such a long shot. If somebody's shopping for family or a friend at an open house, right. you know. I, I was like, well, what do I have to lose? I don't have anything going on right now. So I met him at a house. I was so nervous. I'm like, I am probably so stupid right now to meet this stranger. But he seemed nice. He was with his wife before. I had my husband on speakerphone the entire time, as if he could do anything to save me. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy didn't know, but Don was on speakerphone. I'm like, Don, just, just be, you know. And then I would like go outside, stand outside the house while he was looking around. And amazingly enough, I actually did sell his kids a house. <laughs> anyway, so you want it, you want to get people shown. If it's a sign call, and I have no idea who this person is, um, what I do is that again, this is all like Brent Go 101, all right? So, hey, yeah, I'd love to show you that property. It's a great listing. Um, can I, and then just find out now what, let me ask you real quick. Are you already pre-approved with the lender? Uh, what's your financing like? Oh no, no, we just saw the house and we don't even know. We have to talk to a lender. We're just curious. We want to see the house. Great. That's awesome. You know, I'll spend the next hour or so getting that all set up for you. So I'm going to take uh, some time and, and work on that. Get it prepared. Would you do me a favor and take three minutes and have a three minute phone call with my lender? and then we'll meet out at the property. Um, oh, sure, no problem. Okay, great, his name is, or her name is Alicia Blackwood. She's gonna call you in about five minutes. Get Alicia on text, blow up her phone, whatever it is. And um, so, you know, just expect her call. I'm gonna send you her number so you'll know. And then if you can't get a hold of Alicia, get a hold of a lender that you know and trust. If they're not willing, if they say, no, 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 we don't, we're really, no, we don't want to talk to a lender. No, we're, we're not really there yet. Oh, no problem. No problem. Well, um, you know, I, I've made a commitment to the sellers or it's maybe not your seller. Maybe it's not your listing, but we have a professional commitment, ethical obligation to take qualified buyers to see these people's homes, right? So um, just say, you know what, uh, my policy is, or however you want to word it, but don't take that person. Don't go miss your kid's soccer game 
or family dinner to go so, show some stranger property that they won't have a three minute conversation with your lender. So if they will though, that's a great sign. Okay, that is good. That means they're willing to invest that time. So then you can meet them at the property. Never have only that property. Have two or three more around the area in your back pocket that are similar to that property because chances are that's not gonna be the house that they're gonna buy. But don't, don't pull those out of your pocket first. Just wait, just see what they're, oh no, you know, this isn't it. No, we just, gosh, the backyard looks so much bigger in the pictures and we actually have to have RV parking because blah, 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 whatever it is, or oh no, the kitchen's not gonna work and we don't wanna do, whatever it is, they're gonna have a reason probably that it's not the house. Okay, no problem, do you guys have a few more minutes because I have a couple more properties I went ahead and took the liberty of setting up showings at these properties. I can cancel if you don't want to see them, but you just start describing the next property. They're going to want to see it. The people love looking at homes. They think that's why we're in real estate. Have you ever been told that? Oh, well, I thought about, about getting my license. I just love looking at homes. <laughs> anyway, they love looking at homes, so they're going to want to see it. So that's what you do. You just start showing properties. Um, then, um, okay, so that's where if it's a stranger, yeah, you want to make sure they could buy the home first. Now, if it's a friend or a referral and they call me and they say, hey, Krista, there's a house we're interested in. We kind of want to see it. If I know them, I'm showing them that property as soon as possible. I'm not going to make them get pre-qualified with the lender. I don't care yet if they can buy a house. I just want to say yes to them. I want them to know that I'm their agent. And so we get to the house. I have this little presentation that I'll do for you that is, again, Brent Go 101. I literally draw it out. I, I got tired of drawing it out, so I made a, a clip art thing, and I think it's in our Brent Go files um, if you want to download it, and it um, offers that win. So I, I go through that, but I wait. I show them the house first. I add the value. I give them what they need, and then I take the leadership because then I start saying, if they like it or you know if they don't like what do you like about it what don't you like what are you looking for well um, let me ask you this have you guys already talked to a lender uh, sometimes no nope. usually I'd say it's no so okay no problem well let me go through with you kind of the steps that we're gonna take so I have also a buyer introduction letter and I just had it's two pages and the letter is ten quick steps I got it from Taffy Marrower a few years ago. I just, she said, yep, yeah, take it, use it. And I'm telling you, take it, use it. <coughs> so it's just the 10 steps. And the very first step is to get your golden magic ticket from the lender. So if they usually, you know, they haven't done that yet. So I say, that's what we're going to do now. Do you have a favorite lender that you've worked with in the past? Um, usually it's no, or well, yeah, we had a guy, but no, who do you recommend? So I recommend the lender. Sometimes I call the lender right there on the phone. Do you have, let, let's just get a hold of them right now. I call them up, hey Alicia, it's Krista. I'm here with Jackie and Russell. We're looking at this awesome house. It's not really the one for them, but they, it's kind of wet their appetite. So they want to see what they can buy. You know, do you have a couple minutes to have a conversation with them? And any, any lender worth their weight, they, they're gonna just, be right, like right on the phone with you. Or they'll say, hey, yeah, give me five minutes. I'll get my computer open. Whatever it is, it's a few minutes. It's always just a few minutes. You have three minutes. And so we get them on the phone and then at least they get the ball rolling. They build a connection. They trust that lender because you trust that lender and you're building, you're, you're building that team and you're adding even more value. And your goal is always to say yes. The answer is always yes. There's certain things that you always say yes to in life, right? Um, one of the things I've said before, I will always say yes to Brent and James, no matter what the question is. Oh, that's such a cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> if I thought if to you're be available, yes, yeah. there, there are certain yeses that you know there's a blessing attached to that yes. If you're in business to sell homes, you got to say yes to potential clients. Like, that's always a yes. So I talked to a client last night, a potential client, I think they're gonna be my client. So I had helped their parents sell and buy a house. And um, his daughter was using, I guess they've gone through a couple lenders. I didn't know, he called me Saturday, he's like, hey, my daughter doesn't know I'm calling you. 
are you taking more clients? I really want her to use you, but they're, you know, they're with this agent that literally the agent, they've had to wait an hour before where the agent ran late to a showing. I was mortified. And then last night she was, she was kind of interviewing me. Like I was interviewing for the job, which I don't care. I welcome it, you know, and she's been burned uh, by two agents. And I think it's because their price point's a little lower. They have restricted hours. They can go see properties. And so she said, you know, how available are you if we need to go see a property? I'm like, oh, I'm available every single day, whatever time you need, because I have this amazing team. And do you know that we can all use one another as showing assistants? So even if it's as a favor, even if you're not paying, because when you're new, I don't believe you should be paying each other. I think you should be covering for each other and doing each other favors. If you've got 10 deals in escrow and you're asking somebody who's new who has zero in escrow, I think you should pay them <laughs> to be your showing assistant. But either way, we are each other's showing assistants, right? And hey, I have showing assistants and if I'm not available there, I, I always have someone available because sometimes I have an appointment I can't move, but I, I want it always, it's gonna be yes, you, I can get you in to see that house. She was just blown away. She was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. You know, so, so we want to say yes. So back to if it's someone you know and it's a potential client, it's always, of course I'll show you that house. What time can you get over there? And so we get over there, show them the house. Then I'll go, with, I'll go through with you. I was telling them about the buyer introduction that your mom and you wrote out the 10 steps oh, the 10 and steps. I still use that. I that and I branded it my name and everything but I shared it with the <laughs> team and it's there for you to use and I know that Taffy and Darcy would not care so um so here's the here's the thing that we do you you get them out they're looking at a house and whether or not they're fully pre-approved or not but they're looking they're hungry they want to make this work or you know ideally you know what price point they want to be because you don't want to show them a house at 450 if their monthly payment about amount is a more comfort level at 389 because they're going to fall in love with something and it's just a heartbreak and i tell them that so if they if the first house just at least gets us to that 10 page or 10 step thing where we converse and I'm getting them pre-approved, then what I say is, okay, let's put a pin in this right now. We can look at a couple more homes today because we're out, but let's put a pin in this until you have that full on conversation with your lender and you know exactly where you're comfortable because they're gonna tell you down payment amount, closing costs, they're gonna tell you not just monthly payment, but what is the full monthly payment with principal, interest, tax, insurance, everything. You'll probably qualify for a house a lot higher than what you actually want to pay for. So let's find out what do you actually want to pay for and then let's go looking because the worst thing in the world is for you to fall in love with a house that you're not willing to buy right. or that you just really can't afford on a monthly basis. So let's put a pot, but they love it. See, I'm just providing leadership. They don't know. So I'm not saying no, I'm just leading <coughs> them through. So then now we get to where we're going to go looking. Let me show you some, I'll explain some scenarios where I've drawn this out before. So uh, the first time that I ever used this, I didn't actually use it. Um, Brent was my coach, you know, and for those of you who have a split with Brent, you know that you always have a coach, right, on the Brent Go team. So Brent was my personal coach and I had met this gal at an open house in my first year and, <clears throat> And so uh, she was so nice, so warm. I go, well, listen, why don't we do this? Let's, and Brent always taught us this too, come to my office like you're a professional. Just like if you're a doctor, your patients come to your office. If you're an attorney, your clients come to your office. When can you come to my office and we can sit down and talk about the process? I go off script now. But in the beginning, I had everybody come to my office because I just needed to stick close to the script. Because that, when you have clearly defined boundaries, you're more comfortable with that. And you can uh, function within those boundaries with more confidence. Now, I don't need the physical boundaries as much because I, it's just with the experience and time, it, I'm okay. So, but if you can, get them in the office. And we'll sit down, we'll talk, I'm gonna write it out for you, and then we'll get your game plan together. So she said, that sounds great, and I, had, at the time, I didn't know what I was doing at all. And even though I'd seen what I'm about to write down for you, I'd never done it myself. 
So um, I recommend that while I'm writing it out, you write it out on your paper. I probably have written this out at least 20 times. Every time, even to this day, if Brent writes it out, I draw it out. So um, we got her in the office, and I remember it was uh, Jeff Compton and Brent and me and the buyer in a room about this big with a big whiteboard. It was that Keller Williams room that we used to always have our team meetings in. And you would have thought Brent was talking to 50 people. I mean, <laughs> he just put all, you know, and that's what I love is, and he always says, you know, um, what sells is enthusiasm. I am sold myself. And so we want to have that enthusiasm. So the next, so the first time we did this was with her and it literally, she needed like a year by the time she got qualified her roadmap for the lending approval was a year long. We got her into a house. Wow. And so the next time I did this appointment though, it was just me and Jeff and the buyers. I called them in the office and it was me now on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so nervous. I was probably shaking as I wrote. Anyway, so um, that, and I was competing for their business. I had met them at an open house. I'd ask them to come in the office, hey, let's just talk about how we work together and just see if it would be a good fit. They came, they sat down, they took it so seriously, and the next day they texted me and said, Krista, we've decided that of the two agents, we would we feel more comfortable going with you. You were so organized. You were so prepared. And I thought, oh my gosh, I was. I was totally <laughs> faking it. <laughs> so it's really not fake if you're copying a master. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna show you the master's plan right here. So his whole thing, and it still works to this day. I use it with every buyer that I work with. And so he says, so here's what we're doing now. We're out there, we're looking at homes. And these are all the homes we're looking at. You know, and, and these are the ones that are out there in your price range, in your criteria, and we're, and then until suddenly, bing, bing, bing. And I might not do this exactly like Brent, those of you who have seen it forever, but here it is. This is the house. This is the one, and you want it. And guess what? Everybody else knows that's the one, too. So congratulations, you picked a good one. I mean, there's like eight offers on this house. You, that's awesome, you picked a great house. So see how we turn that around? Because most people think multiple offers are horrible, and uh, oh, that, that's a bummer. No, we don't wanna fight for it, let's just go. So we say, no, you, you picked a great house. This is awesome, everybody sees the value here. So let me tell you what we're gonna be able to do so that you have a way to get this house um, that will cost you nothing, but it's gonna be everything to the seller, and it's gonna make you stand out. So here's how, um, whatever you wanna say, here's how everyone else is gonna to go to the table, and here's how, you know, here's how you or us or whatever. So this is the offers that win file, okay? So here's, where, here's how we write offers that win, and we are not afraid of multiple offers. We usually win in multiple offers. And I will tell you this, using this strategy, you're either gonna get the house or you're gonna eyes wide open, know why you're not getting it, and it'll be because you've decided to step away. But we're not gonna wonder why you didn't get the house. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna put down, um, you know, because you're working with this awesome lender that I set you up with, everyone else, they're gonna close in 30 days, and we are gonna close in 15 to 20 days, depending on what their loan is. You know, you could, you could, you know, we're gonna close in 15 days. Or I actually, honestly, recently had a VA close super, it was an $890,000 VA loan closed in seven days. Holy mackerel. What? 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 Yeah. Unreal. What? Wow. Because they were already pre-approved, already set up, all they needed was the address. It's crazy. Anyway, um, so, to, you know, get with the lender, uh, hopefully you know ahead of time, and Jeff has closed VA in 10 days for me, uh, again, because we kept losing in multiple offers because it was VA. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you the chain of um, value, too, in, in offers. But, so everybody else is closing in 30 days, now we're gonna close in 20 days. Okay, the other thing is most people put down only, you know, the minimum of 1% of the purchase price, 
But listen, whatever you have available, if you can put down, instead of, you know, this is, you're not gonna lose this money at all, it's your money, if you cancel, you get it back. I've never had a client lose this money ever. And when you tell them that, you know, has, have any of you had a client lose their AMD? Okay, you can now confidently say, nobody on our team has ever had a client lose their AMD. So, um, you know, instead of the 1%, let's say it's a, you know, $400,000 home. So, uh, we're gonna put, you know, if you are able to, you know, pull that out, you're gonna put it on your down payment anyway. Just go ahead and, you know, maybe 20,000 EMD. It costs you nothing, but the seller's eyes are gonna pop out. Okay, um, other people, they're gonna do 17 days inspections. We're gonna do it in seven days. And that is plenty of time. And if we find something else that needs to be inspected, we'll get more time for it. Um, other people are gonna do their appraisal in 17 days. And I know for sure our lender can do it in 12 days. You know, even 10 probably, but I, I just go with 12 depending on the holiday schedule and stuff. Um, the other thing is, other people are going to ask for repairs, and we're going to go in as is. You love the house? Do you, does any, do you know, do you see any concerns? No, it looks great. I mean, I'm, yeah, we want to fix a few things up, but that's after we buy it. No, it looks good. We can't, and, and we say, listen, this does not mean you're buying the house no matter what. It just means you're not gonna ask for repair requests. If you see something that's a deal breaker, no problem. We'll just, I'll call the agent and I'll say, bad news, um, my new bad news, we're gonna have to cancel this deal. I'm, I'm so heartbroken about it, but uh, they found something in the inspections and they just can't move forward as is. What, what is it, what is it? Tell me, maybe we can work it out. And so instead of, you, um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, you're not going to ask for repairs, but if it's a deal breaker for you, most likely it's going to be a deal breaker for any other buyer down the line, and now they're going to have to disclose it up front. So believe me, they're going to want to fix it with you instead of completely start over and remarket the home. Okay, okay, yeah, that's good, that's good, yeah, we can go in as is, no problem. And if they ever hesitate about that, you know that every purchase agreement is already as is anyway. It's already in the contract. Sellers not only have, can um, deny repair requests, but they don't even have to acknowledge a repair request. So, um, am I missing something? What else is there? Um, quick response time on. Oh yeah, sense of urgency. By uh, pay for escrow fee and home warranty on the buyer side. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That is that. You're that's right. what I do most you do. of the time. Yeah. yeah. So that's not part of the official what Brent says, yeah. but you can do things like that. Yeah. So the other thing is, uh, but that's going to sometimes cost you money. And I, I don't, you know, especially when you're new, you don't want to be paying for a bunch of home warranties or anything like that. It really adds up. But, <laughs> but, oh, but the buyer can't. Oh, that there free rent back. Yeah. That was it. Free rent. The the thing though, if you're paying for at least a hundred percent of the escrow fee, maybe not title insurance, but I'll do that. Yeah. And buying your own home warranty, if they can swing it, yeah. I always have them do that because then when you're if you're it's in multiple offers, then they're like, we don't have to counter wrap all this right. other stuff, and it net might put you over the top. Yeah. But it'll at least get you a counter. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, I like that so, too. Yeah, I yeah. like it when buy if I'm on a listing. I do like it when buyers buy their own home warranty. Me too. I think it kicks off sellers when you ask them for it. Yeah. Yeah. And that the fridge, your seller went back. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> uh, yeah, free rent back. That was yeah. the that was the other big one. I knew there was a big one. So, um, and also not asking for the pest report. I think oh. that oh no pest. I mean, we don't. Nobody does that anymore. I haven't seen that in no. forever. But just saying, sometimes people do, but we're not going to do that because it's a hundred and twenty five bucks or whatever. Yeah. You know. Don't ask the seller to pay for any inspections. Yeah. It, you know, if we just say you're going to pay for your own inspections because they're yours anyway. Yeah. Like you want the inspector working for you. Unless yeah. they already have it, because some houses nowadays, any good listing agent will have those right. available for but you. But I will anyway. say, still get your own. Yes. Because that home inspector that did it for the seller, they owe you nothing uh, like to um, back up the inspection once you're the owner. And so I'm um, actually that burned one of my clients. So if my clients waive any inspections, I make them sign the official waiver and I tell them in writing on an email, 
yeah, no problem. You can waive that and it'll be officially against my advice. So they have it in an email and then they sign it. I'm waiving this against the advice of my agent. So I just cover myself because. You do that for roof and. Yes. I would better. Sewer. Like, yeah. All of it. I do. I just don't want anything to come back on me. That's me. Brent doesn't do all that. I do. I just. I, Yes, so okay. like most home inspections, you'll have you'll sign a contract, the client will sign a contract, and that's with them and the inspection company. So that means like if client A has a home inspection with my company and client A goes away and it ends up in client B's hands, mm -hmm. client B has no recourse against my company because of the amount of time that's passed or whatever, and we never had a contract with that person. Right. So really, when your client is willing to waive their inspection, that's that's a that's a risk that they're taking. So you absolutely want to cover cover yourself because you know it's not a fun conversation to have. But if I don't have a relationship with somebody, I have no obligation to to any of that. And it says on the first page just about everybody's every every inspector, yeah. everyone. Yeah. So if you're like representing a second buyer that uses the first buyer's home inspection, you want them to get their you want them to get their own. Yeah, or at sure. least a lot of a lot of companies will at least readdress it with a new buyer. So maybe it's not the five hundred dollars, but it's hey, a hundred dollar fee. Can I, fee can I give you a couple of hundred bucks to go meet out of this property and go over what you found? Some will, some won't. Yeah. Um, but it's always worth asking for yes. sure. Yes, that's a good point. So yeah, the red back. So okay, um, let's say the seller needs. To, okay, because we're only closing in 20 days. Well, the seller needs a little more time to get out. They, they would like, you know, seven to 14 days because other people are offering a 30 days. So some people will counter back and say, hey, they would really rather close in 30 days. And if I'm representing the buyer, I say, hey, well, what about, well, usually we write in so they don't even have to call me, seven to 10 or 14 days free rent back for the seller. So they get their money in 15 days, in 20 days, but they can live in the house for another seven or 14 days at no charge. And Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, this doesn't cost you anything because you won't even have a first mortgage payment until, and I don't know, I always have to calculate that at the time. How do you calculate first mortgage payments when they're gonna have it, Darcy? Okay, so if they close before, just say like the 10th of that month, mm -hmm. Um, so mortgages are paid in arrears. That's kind of when you know that they may get those like actually two months. Because you know sometimes they actually get two months more. Right. So I think if it's so, say right now your client's going to close January 8th, they may not have to pay it to March 1st. Okay, so if they close before the 10th of the month, they might have up to two months mortgage. And I know Alicia's going to talk to us in a few minutes, so I'll ask her to address this at that, at that point. Oh yeah, Alicia will build a um, few minutes. <clears throat> Well, she's gonna talk in a minute. Oh, okay. let, let, let me, I just wanna wrap this part up. So then the other thing is when you are presenting an offer, <coughs> you're not closing that, because they always want us to. Um, when you're presenting an offer, you're always going to call, or usually text is more effective, and I text the other agent and I find out, don't just write blind offers. I, hey Kim, my clients absolutely love Michelin Court. Do you have any offers on that? I bet your phone's probably blowing up. Oh my gosh, I have seven offers. Okay, Kim, that's amazing. Listen, what, let me just describe what my clients are gonna do. Um, they're thinking about you know, 20,000 EMD. They're gonna come in with uh, seven days inspections. They're gonna go in as is, no repair requests. Even though they're gonna, they can close in 15 days, but they're willing to give up to two weeks free rent back to the seller. They're gonna buy their own home warranty. <coughs> They will be willing to uh, cover escrow. Like I just start describing the, the I lay it all out. Um, if they come in at, and I name whatever price my clients are hoping for, you know, or a little lower. If they come in, let's say it's at 400, and if they come in at 410, will that be competitive? And they usually always answer yes or no. I mean, I, I don't have to, they don't say, oh, I can't tell you. Like I just ask them point blank, if they come in at 420, will that be competitive? I, you can't not answer that question. So uh, they always answer and then, or they'll say, no, it's, we got two others and uh, we got a cash. I'm like, okay, they're conventional. And oh, we have two other cash deals. I'm like, okay, is there any way we could beat out that cash? 
I'm asking, like I'm putting a deal together before I even send it off. Like I want to know where we stand before I send it yeah. off. And or if they come back and say, oh my gosh, Krista, we have um, two cash offers, uh, both thirty thousand over asking with no appraisal contingency. I'm like, oh, yikes. <laughs> okay. So I go back to my buyers who are maybe FHA or they're conventional but contingent on the sale of their property. Here's where it's at. They got two cash offers. They're going to close in ten days with no appraisal contingency. What do you want to do? I mean, there's no, you know, they can't do it. So then, you know, you also hope. Oh, sure. And this is in his book too. And then the other thing you want to always have this conversation with buyers because maybe they're out looking and you're again you just met them out at the property or they you met them at an open house you don't know their whole scenario don't wait to show them property first until like just get them out show them the property that's how they get to know you and then uh like give them something give them some of your time and then uh if they have a house they need to sell just say okay that's awesome let's let's meet at your house this week, give me your address, I'll run some numbers, there's no strings attached, you don't have to do a single thing, but I, I just want you to know where you stand in the market. So if you're a seller, and you're telling this to your buyer, when you're gonna go sell your house, you're gonna get offers. And you're gonna weed those offers out, and I'm gonna, you know, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at cash offers, because those are the fastest close, and they can go as is, and it, no, not even the lender, you know, is going to read. There's no lender, so there's no repairs required at all. And then there's a conventional loan buyer, and that's really still strong. It's pretty strong, like close to a cash offer. Then there's FHA and VA. The only these are great loans, and they're fine. The only thing is sometimes. Even if the buyer doesn't want to ask for repairs, the lender will demand repairs to be made. So that's why you know you got to consider that. And then there's someone who's going to make an offer contingent on the sale of their property, uh, or we call it COP, contingent on the sale of property. And their property is listed and in contract. And they're about to close escrow on this and they just have to find a replacement house. And then there's contingent on the sale of property and it's listed and no buyer. And then there's somebody and they've got to sell their property and it's not yet listed. So right now, where, where you fall in this spectrum is you're right down here. So when you make an offer right now, you're really kind of the lowest on the totem pole on what somebody would consider to be a strong offer. So what we want to do is we want to get your property listed and get a buyer, but we're going to make your sale of your property contingent on your ability to find a replacement property and get past your inspections. So what that does is it brings you right up here to be able to compete in a better position so you have a stronger footing and you're not at risk of being homeless because it costs you nothing for me to list your house. I only get paid if you get paid and we're gonna get you the top price possible and then even once you're in contract to sell, to sell your home, you're not forced to sell if you don't find something you absolutely love that's out there at that time. So you're removing all the risk from them, there's nothing to lose. So that's how you kind of get that. Now, the last thing I want to say is when you have a buyer out looking and <clears throat> they're not sure, you know, and classic conversation. I, I had this sweet family and there was a house and you know how when you know what's out there and you're thinking, this is a great house in this market. If they don't get this house, they're going to be waiting for months before another opportunity like this comes up. But they don't know that because their so, that fear of missing out is so strong in them. And so, um, so I, we let the showing, I could tell they liked it. And it's such a great house. And I say, uh, let, I don't know, let's just pick a price point. It was at 400000 And I say, so what do you guys think? Do you love this? Do you want to make an offer? Well, I mean, we like it. I don't know if we love it. Okay, totally get it. Would you love it at 380? Oh, 
Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Would you love it at three, better at 375? Like what point would at what price would you love this house? And so we made an offer. And that wasn't the one they ended up getting, but sometimes they have to write an offer, they have to go through the process and tell them, listen, writing an offer is not buying the house. You write the offer, you can cancel for any reason during the inspection period. You won't lose a single thing. If you've already done inspections, you'll pay for those up front, but that's it. So writing an offer is not buying the house. It's just taking it off the market. See, let's see if you can even agree on a price. And if you can, then you take it off the market because while you're thinking about it, somebody else is writing an offer. So let's go in low now and, and get it tied up before, you know, otherwise then you're doing highest and best. So always ask that question, would you love it at whatever? I use that even on my listings. Um, if I have, I follow up on every showing and, uh, you know, if the agent says, oh, they really liked it, but they're not sure, you know, they're still trying to decide. I'm like, okay, they liked it. Well, would they, and I start dropping the price. Would they love it at such and such? Would they love it at such and such? Love it. And then I tell them, just ask them, just, just get them to write an offer. I'm like, you and I both know that when a buyer writes an offer, they become emotionally attached to that home. And then seller, none of us know what a seller will do until they have a written offer on the table. They might say, there's no way we're moving on price, but they get a written offer and then they start, that offer starts looking really good to them. So let's just see if we can put a deal together. You know, I've got the time. Do you have the time? And that's what I do when I have a listing. I just, I, I've sucked more offers out of other agents who didn't know how to get their buyer to write an offer. So we had this gold mine, this wealth of knowledge and ability that we've gotten from Brent and one another. Use it to coach other agents in the whole process, you know. Um, so before Alicia comes up, I want to touch on something that just happened and I'm facing it again right now. So I had a buyer, we walked in this gorgeous house, they had section one clearance already done, and it, <coughs> it was Chris Shepard's listing. Yeah, and so um, it was amazing. Like, oh, there, they already have section one clearance, the house was impeccable, so like, okay, as is, no problems. Got the house, well then the home inspector went from North American Home Inspector and said, hey, by the way, there's like a ton of rat droppings in the attic. I'm like, oh, great. And the pictures were disgusting. So then we thought, wow, why didn't this come up on a pest report? Well, there's different licenses. And so a regular pest inspector who does termite inspections, unless they have a license for the pest management side, they're not even allowed to tell you that there's rat droppings in there. They can't even point it out. Now the home inspector can, but by that time we're already in contract. So the we called pest management, they sent somebody out and the guys called me, he's like, this is like the worst rat infestation oh. I've seen in 25 years. Oh, 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 oh. Well, the sellers were upset because they felt like they had already taken care of it so they wouldn't budge oh, no. on dealing with it. I couldn't oh. believe it. Oh. <laughs> So the other agent and I, she's a veteran too, and um, I said, Chris, I'm like, how did you and I not know about this whole issue? And because we felt like this was an education for us as agents, we decided let's split the cost of it, and we called our good buddy Dan and said, what can you do for us on price? <laughs> and he was so amazing. So do you want to, and now I have a listing where called North American because I knew there was some dry rot issues and some uh, damage in ceilings. So they're doing all that. And I happen to know the tenant and she said, oh my gosh, I think there's a rat in the, in the attic too. And I thought, oh, oh great. This is all <laughs> deja vu. <laughs> so I, I, it's not on market yet. So I, I sent my seller the whole thing. I'm like, I know you're probably tempted to think, why didn't they point this out? They're actually not allowed to, so it's a really great thing that your tenant noticed this now before you're in contract with the buyer. So, uh, what? Like, explain, explain so, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you're, so you're exactly right. So it's actually, under, under the Structural Pest Control Act, there are three different branches of licensing. There's fumigation is branch one, branch two is your general pest, 
Um, termite is, is technically, right? you guys have probably heard me say WDO before, wood destroying organisms. That's how we encapsulate dry rot because dry rot's a fungus, it's a living, breathing thing that deteriorates the wood and termites. So basically, it's wood destroying organisms. So, so that's where that falls. The, the branch two guys are general pests. So, so you're, you're almost completely right. The branch three guy, your termite guy, can say that there's rodent activity up there. Um, they are under no obligation to do so, and a lot of them aren't comfortable with it. They can't sell it, so they don't have a license to negotiate on the pricing of, of those repairs. So that's a good question to ask of your termite inspector. Hey, are you are you also a branch two? Because a lot of them are. That's a Some good question. Are. are you also um, Because two? if your guy is branch one and branch two, he can help you with both. Um, and there are certain inspectors in North American that are both, yes. but not all of them. Yes, correct. Uh, we actually have a home inspector who's all three. Okay. Yeah. Um, we try, we, our business model, we don't encourage that. We actually prefer you to have three sets of ice instead of just one looking at all the things. Um, we think that that's, that's a, a value to your client and yourself and, and really a bus as well because us having three people with their property is mm -hmm. going to cover our backside a little better than one trying to do three things. Um, but uh, it's funny because this one's starting to come up and it seems like, you know, when the weather starts to get wet, we, you know, rodents look for cover too, right? Um, this is a great time to reach out to your database and say, hey, go check your AC unit. We just bought a house and I had to seal up all the seals because my home is like, dude, you need to seal this up like it's a freaking mouse super highway going straight to your attic, right? Like, he's all, look, he's all, who do you work for? And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I haven't bought the house yet. I can't do anything. But, but again, but it's so, so when the, when the wet weather comes, you know, for us, it's, you know, our phones ring a little more, but there's more questions, there's more concerns, there's, there's, there's roofs that are getting baked by 120 degree sun all summer long. And drying out and crack, you know, and people going on for the across. So for us, you know, roof season is kind of busy. But um, <clears throat> another one that came up along the similar line, we had issued a section one and section two clearance on a property, and two months after they moved in, a mold issue arrived. Uh -oh. And they were like, wait a minute, I've got this. And the, the agent, who was like a 20 year experienced agent, she's like, well, can I even put any faith in a section one and section two clearance? I'm like, well, yeah, there was no moisture condition at the time, and there was no dry rot or termite activity. I said, let me make sure we're speaking the same language here, because my guys aren't licensed um, industrial hygienists. We can't tell you it's mold. We're going to tell you it's like some dark staining, or you know, and we're going to refer you to, to the appropriate trade, or say you know you might want to consider having some testing done on this. Um, we're going to try and do it as, as, in a, a non-alarming way. Um, but we have to deliver that information if we see it. And was was um, that recommendation on the report? Yes, uh, there there actually was an area. And you know what? Actually, no. It was it was in a further inspection item that they decided not to, to forego. Do. Okay. Yeah. So um, which is a whole nother. I might stand here and talk to you guys for about yeah. all these things. But um, I think the most important thing for you guys, we're a resource. Even if it's not, even if we didn't do the do the inspection, I appreciate you know Krista and and Darcy and everybody who I've worked with, I know when you guys call me and there's an issue, like, we're gonna work through it. There's not gonna be any finger pointing in <laughs> or miss this, whatever. Like, if I have to go out to the property and we have to eat crow and we miss something, God forbid, it happens, we're human too. Um, but we wanna be a resource, resource for you guys. So that's, that's really why I'm here. I know Mike and I went through one uh, a little while back as well, so. Well, and that was the comforting thing and that's why, again, we, preach so much on loyalty and relationships because you will run up against a really difficult thing. And it was so comforting because Chris didn't actually, I don't think she had directly talked to you before right, that. Yeah, and she's a, like a, she's an actual broker and everything. Yeah. But she's a great, I highly respect her as an agent. <clears throat> and I said, listen, I know the rep personally, he's all, he works with us all the time. Let me just call him and I bet there's something <laughs> they can do to help us out. Yeah. And she was so grateful, and just the relationships are. It's nice when we work with both sides for. Yeah. We worked with Chris for years. Yeah, well, she so. had used to this forever, so yeah. I was surprised she didn't really, you know, know you personally yet. But um, she sure liked you after yeah. that. <laughs> so, oh yeah, we want to talk about the spasmatics are coming. Yeah. Who's who's going to this? All right. Hundred people so far. Oh. <laughs> Bird's saying thousand, so we got some more right, people. <laughs> 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 Whoever's watching.
watching this, you gotta fly out to see the Spasmatics. It's like the best 80s cover band on the planet. I do Michael to. Jackson better than Michael Jackson does Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for those of you who are on the team, like split with Brent, you can win this trip to Maui. And uh, all you have to do is sell only seven houses by June 30th. And for every escrow you put into escrow in December, as long as it closes, it doesn't have to close in December, but it has to start in December, you get double credit for that. What so, are the ones you're closing in December? No, it has to start in it has to start. It has to be as of December 1st, a new escrow, Darcy. It's gonna cost you a trip. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not on the team split, you are welcome to come, please do. Like, it's so fun. We have so many people on these trips, so it's gonna be awesome. 10 days in Maui and Kauai, and <clears throat> Alicia, thank you for coming. Do you want to share with us uh, one question you could answer that we were talking about when you walked in? How, when does your first payment start as a new buyer, and how do you calculate that as an agent? And do you want to come up here, because I can sure. the camera, and <coughs> yeah. you'll be on the camera. So, um, so <laughs> whenever you close during the month, if you close the 15th of the month, they're gonna collect interest from that day up until the first of the next month, and then you do not pay that first of the month until the following first of the month. And the reason is mortgage payments are always paying for the prior 30 days. Okay. So rent is for the future, mortgages are for the past. Um, and so when they start that 30 year fix or whatever the term might be, that payment needs to remain the same every single payment for the full term. So it doesn't start the following first of the month, it's the first of the month after that. So if this is, let's say we're coming up on December 15th, mm -hmm. and this is January. So if they close any time in here, mm -hmm. they're not gonna have a payment until February 1st? If they close any time in December, okay, up until the 31st, okay, their payment will be February 1st. Wow. So any time in here, mm -hmm. February 1st, okay? And technically, they could close through the 6th of January okay. and okay. still have a February 1st payment. Okay. And the reason people okay. would wanna do that, if they're cash uh, in hand poor at closing and they don't really have a lot of money, if they fund through the 6th of January with a February 1st payment, there'll be an interest credit to them per day of six days um, it's a credit instead of a charge. If they have a, um, if they close within here and they choose a March payment, now they have all of January's interest at closing, so it increases their cash to close. Okay. Okay. So if if so, some clients go, I would rather pay more today, mm -hmm. and have the March first payment, because when they pay more today, they only pay the interest, not the principal, mm -hmm. just interest, so it's less. Um, and then they can do the March payment, or if they go, well, I don't have any money, then they can choose a quick, a very quick first payment and then reduce their cash to close. Got it. That's, oh, that's helpful, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. So yeah. thank you. Six. Up through the sixth okay. of the month. Okay. Okay. okay, that is excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. And no then problem. whatever else you wanted to share with Wait, us. How much time do you have in real life? You've got like <laughs> five to 10 minutes. Five to ten minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna take my. I'm gonna keep my lengthy one for next time. Uh, and I just got finished speaking at um, SAR at a for a top producer panel. So I'm gonna share a couple important things uh, that I got from that. First things first, the Fannie Mae and FHA loan limits are changing. If you guys haven't already heard, most people have, but I want you to understand what that means. So January 1st, specifically in Placer, Sacramento counties. Now you can borrow up to 510,400 to be exact and get the best interest rates. And, and that's, that's loan amount? That's called the purchase price. Conforming that's loan, loan amount. amount. Yeah, wow. so the new conforming loan amount is 510,400. Wow. Now that's your best set of interest rates that are gonna be available um, and that's the most lenient guidelines, okay? With kind of conforming. Okay. Now, high balance is the next tier of loan amount, and that'll take you from 510 to 765. So now you can go all the way up to 70, 765, 600 before you're considered a jumbo loan. 
Mm. Okay. Now a jumbo loan now means the client needs tons of reserves or savings in the bank. It's an additional guideline that's tied to jumbos. So typically they want anywhere from six months reserves. Now a reserve is one month worth of the mortgage payment saved in their bank account. So if they need six months or 18 months, some banks want an entire year and a half worth of the mortgage payment and savings wow. account, but that gives them an extremely low interest rate. So jumbo rates wow. can become lower than conforming wow. because they require higher credit scores and they require savings. Um, but for the average person, their best rate is here. High balance is higher, higher rate. The reason high balance is a higher interest rate than conforming is this is the way, this is the place that most people who have the champagne taste beer budgets run to, and they get themselves a little in over their head and they have the highest foreclosure rate. Mm -hmm. Because they're signing themselves up for the most payment, but they're lacking the savings required to right. withstand any storm. Mm -hmm. So they're the highest risk loans. Mm -hmm. So they have a higher level of criteria um, to fit into that. So we haven't gotten new loan amounts that are released for our niche product. We have a niche product that will allow us to go above the 765 and still use these guidelines, uh, they haven't given me the loan now, I can't wait, because it'll probably be up, up more toward 800 um, and still be able to get these low rates and good terms. Wow. But in the meantime, that's just huge for all of our customers. So a video to the database would be, hey everybody, we're super excited, great news. Now you can buy that house of your dream if you're currently at 500, you've been always wanting to get to 600, but you couldn't quite qualify. The debt to income ratio allowed here is up to 50, Whereas Jumbo, it's under 43. So the client gets 7% higher debt to income allowance, now up to 765. So that fits a lot of people in there. Plus, again, no savings required up to 765. They don't have to have savings in the bank. Wow. And up to 765, you can go as low as 3% down and do no mortgage insurance as low as 3% down. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, it really gives the client more flexibility to not have to put the 20% down to avoid the mortgage insurance. Does everybody know what mortgage insurance is? Yeah. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure. That's awesome. Yeah, so do you have any questions about any of that? Does this, has this already started or does it start in January? It's supposed to start January 1st. I can offer it now. Okay. Yeah, so if clients get in contract now, I can apply it okay. now for them, which is nice. Um, really quickly, just because I've been getting asked a lot about specialty products for first time home buyers, and I'm seeing more and more clients actually come up with a little bit down, let's say 3%, and agents getting more closing cost credits. Um, we have different products now, again, up to the 765, where if they can just scrounge together the 3%, uh, we're still getting rates under four and a quarter, and, and some of them 3.875, if they can just come up with that 3%, uh, and then you guys can always ask for closing costs. So there is lower mortgage insurance and lower interest rates for people. And really now only one person has to be a first time home buyer. So if you have someone who's seasoned and someone who's brand new, we can actually still give them the, the first time home buyer products as long as just one of them qualifies, rather than both having to fit the box. So I just want to let you guys know that. Um, in the interest of time, is there any other questions you guys have for me? Think about any some products you've heard about, or it's so easy, man. <laughs> what is that interest rate for five ten? Um, at, like for a good credit score. Under, under off the off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, well, there's there's literally so many different pieces of the puzzle that come into that. But I like I said, I am seeing three to five percent down and still getting rates under four okay. percent with one point cost. Um, without cost, you're still like four and a quarter. I mean, it's insane. It's really, really low. Um, so, and again, it, it's gonna dictate whether you want mortgage insurance or not. If you don't want mortgage insurance, the rates are higher. But our mortgage insurance is so discounted that you can do 5% down and literally still only pay 150 a month. It depends on the credit score. It's very much credit score driven. So, um, anything else? No? Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we, can we stop the recording? Because I have a secret yes. mission. <laughs>